Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to Lego Mini Reviews, the show where I review a ton of different Lego vintage and new sets right here on the Duck Bricks YouTube channel in a short form format. So I have a ton of Brickling orders to get through as well as just associated Lego purchases and I figured instead of making a mega video where I go through every single one that's hours long, why not break it up into separate mini reviews? And so in addition to our normal three videos a week schedule, be be sure to stay tuned for a mini review dropping every single day where we do not normally have a standard video releasing. I hope you enjoy and let's jump right into our first pick. All right, so here we have set number 80036. This is the Monkey Kid City of Lantern set retailing for 150 US dollars and is truly the flagship set of this year's Monkey Kid wave. A while back, I put out a whole Easter eggs and references video featuring all the different Easter eggs and nods to other LEGO themes and stuff from the Monkey Kid show in its own separate video, linked in the description below, so do check that out if you want a very thorough overview of the set. Because I already did that, I will be very briefly reviewing this and just kind of describing how I feel about the set and its value in general. So first of all, you can see immediately that this set is kind of supposed to evoke the same building style or principles of the Ninjago City sets, or the Ninjago City modulars, although at a much cheaper price. Which is really nice because it actually gives people a good entry point into this style of LEGO building, while not having to break the bank while doing so. What's really nice is that this features a full-on monorail going through the entire set. This is actually just using the standard roller coaster pieces, but it's basically just supposed to be a modern LEGO monorail. It even references the original LEGO Airport Shuttle monorail, which you can see here in the logo, so it very much is supposed to be a monorail. Of course, this also has a lot of different buildings, and it truly is a modular build, which means every single one of these buildings can be removed, and they have the right amount of Technic connections on the side to actually be added on to the previous Monkey Kid buildings, which is a really nice thing. You can see here the Technic holes are specifically meant to interface with the other buildings in the Monkey Kid series, which is something that's really fantastic and means that you could really truly expand the set. Even if you bought two of the set, you can do a lot of stuff with it, which actually the LEGO designer of the set posted a picture of what two of them combined looks like, which is a really cool thing. And of course, if you have other Monkey Kid buildings, you can add those on too and truly have a full display. So first of all, you can see here that every single section can be removed. So you've got, first of all, the Lotus Hotel section here. It features this year's collectible, which we mentioned previously, these fire ring-like things. And you also have a nicely brick-built lantern. It's really, really just a standard facade. Obviously, the back is pretty much just wide open up here, but it is just nice to see, in general, a full-on hotel. Moving onwards, there actually is a LEGO store. This LEGO store right here features a ton of references to older LEGO themes, which is really, really nice. I really love all the different references here, which you again can see in detail for my references video. This is a really great build for a LEGO store because it even features the pick-a-brick wall as well as some checkout counters there. Very, very compact, obviously, because this has to be super compact, but it gets the point across very nicely and adds some nice color and nice refreshment to the set itself. Moving onwards, we have a panda store. These are staples in the Monkey Kid line. We actually did get a full-on panda store retail store in one of the other sets, and so it's nice to see this kind of trend continuing. It again is a very, very tiny convenience store. Not a lot of space where you can put figures in, just basically the most bare-bones checkout counter that you can imagine, but it does its job well and serves its purpose fine. Moving onwards, we have a much larger store here that actually can be fully removed. This right here is just the noodle store, so it's actually a full-on restaurant featuring a lot of interior detail. This is probably one of my favorite buildings in the set because this also introduces the brand new LEGO chopstick element, and these tables here are just really nice in general. You can see the hot sauce container there, you've got your stone pot bowl in the center, which is a staple of eating at Asian restaurants, and of course you have your different spices and, and packets of sauce here that you can actually use to add on to your food. So this is just a really nice space and I'm really impressed by the amount of detail they were able to pack in in such a small space. Down here, we also talked about this in my other video, but there's a lot of references to other Monkey Kid villains, which you can see in this corner here, as well as actually a nice station for chefs to prepare the meals. Moving onwards, we have a bit of a lobster store here as well. It's a very, very basic thing. It's just kind of its own stand here, but it actually is featuring some lobster food, so it's nice to get this in a full set here. Obviously, this is probably one of the most basic displays that you can see from the set itself, but it just adds a nice level of detail here. 
And of course, onto the base of the building here, everything is actually fully modular, even at this level. So if you wanted to, you can just very carefully detach the roller coaster or monorail elements here. If we're careful about it, you can actually just pull these off, these separate out, and you can use this to expand the city should you actually want to expand it in any case. Down here, they also included, it's a little hard to see, but they included a ton of extra Technic pins, which are really useful if you want to use the buildings in the standard lineup display for a standard street, instead of using them on this larger city display here, which is a really nice touch. I am really happy they actually included the extra Technic pins to do that. They did not need to, but it's a very nice touch. Of course, with everything pretty much removed, it is very bare bones. You really just have a standard structure for the city, and it really only comes together once all the buildings are stacked on. You can see this in action once I actually remove this side of the building here. Everything just comes right off here, and of course, this is not meant to actually come off this uh, roller coaster piece here, but obviously, this is basically just your standard structure and the base of the set. But again, I think it's really cool that you actually have the modular playability aspect of this that you can really move stuff around. What's also very nice, as you may notice, they included an extra section of roller coaster track here, which is specifically included in case you want to expand this city. If you buy two copies of the set, you can use this track to actually expand the track layout, which I think is a great inclusion. They did not need to include it again. They even include the extra 2x2 tile to make it all line up nicely. This is really making me want to purchase two of these, because that's just so nice they included it in case you wanted to buy more than one. Of course, with all of this section removed, we can actually see what it looks like when you have all the buildings on the ground laid out together. So, of course, you've got the hotel here, but everything just stacks up and forms its own street. And what's really nice is that they actually made sure there is some semblance of a road here. Every single building can be fully modularly attached to each other. I'm not using the pins right now, but you can kind of see what that's supposed to look like. And these actually continue again alongside these standard Lego Monkey Kid buildings, which were introduced in some of the other Monkey Kid sets. So it's really cool that you can actually have a full-on street and you can use those other buildings on this structure here, you don't need to use these buildings. So again, if you buy two of the set, you can swap out the buildings and have a full-on large city, which I think is awesome. Moving onwards, though, that honestly is basically all there is to say about the set. I think it's probably one of my favorite Monkey Kid sets yet. Just a lot of detail packed into a truly fantastic display. I always love it when LEGO designers reference all sorts of different obscure LEGO stuff, older LEGO themes and whatnot, and this set is really jam-packed with all sorts of references to classic LEGO builds and LEGO sets, so I think this is probably one of my favorite sets of the year. With everything reassembled, you can see the set in all its glory, and in terms of the price tag, I think $150 is honestly pretty fair for a set of this size. You're not paying as much as Ninjago City, so I wouldn't expect the same level of detail and building techniques that you would see in the Ninjago City modulars, but on its own, this is truly a fantastic set. I cannot stop gushing about it, I really do love the style. It's not going to be for everyone, some people have complained that it does feel a little bit scattered, there's not a lot of visual consistency between all the stores, but I think to an extent that's kind of realistic, and truly feels like a lived in city with all sorts of nooks and crannies for people to discover. All right, for the minifigure lineup of the set, we have Monkey Kid in his casual outfit featuring an exclusive head print design. Of course, everything about the figure is exclusive. He features these casual clothes only in the set. We also have a more casual version of Mr. Tang, although we did get that one in another set, as well as the casual version of May. So these are basically just in their civilian attires, as well as Pigsy, who is also sporting a new design, but of course is in his standard apron. We get a few different civilians featuring a, just a different combination of torsos that we have seen before. We've actually seen this exact civilian in other Monkey Kid sets, so kind of nice to see some visual consistency there. But of course, a lot of these other minifigures are pretty plain. The train conductor in particular seems like it could just be from something out of LEGO City. Onwards to here, we actually have two nods to LEGO Classic Space. I mentioned this in the references and Easter eggs video, but these are essentially supposed to be Explorian slash Spireus droids featuring that vintage LEGO design. The set also includes this nice little vehicle or flying sort of blimp for Pigsy. It's very reminiscent of the Master Wu Skybound miniature blimp that he got in the 2016 wave of Ninjako, but it's a nice little charming build, just nothing too much else I can say about it. And so with that, we have summed up all of the Monkey Kid sets, so now it's time to give my overall thoughts on this wave as a whole. 
All right, and with that, we have summed up this mini LEGO review. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and do let me know down in the comments below what do you think of this set, do you like it, do you dislike it, and if you own it, what have been your experiences with building and playing with the set itself? Also let me know in the comments if you like this format of mini reviews, I'm trying to put them out on a fairly regular basis, so thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very, very soon.